Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a big box of Ligeti. And it's a cheap one, too, and it's still available, which is, like, marvelous. It's Masterworks. Well, it doesn't have all of them, and he wrote quite a few more than we find in here. But still, it's nine discs of marvelous performances by one of the great masters of the 20th century avant-garde. Ligeti is cool. Ligeti was, more or less, a texture guy. That's what he did. He dealt in masses of sound, which he generated in all kinds of fascinating ways, using microtones, using mechanical instruments. And, you know, then yeah, I mean, he also wrote tunes, and he got interested later in his life, actually, in melody and tonal melody, too, in pieces like Hungarian rock and, you know, popular music and oh, all kinds of stuff. He was a questing soul. And I just want to tell you what's in here because it's all worth exploring. It really is. It's not easy music, but who cares? I mean, really, you know, if you want easy, go someplace else. And it's just marvelous. So we have, of course, even a little booky thing here, but no real notes. It just tells you what's in it. And they're all the same. They're not like original jackets or anything. It's a typical budget release. But still, I mean, you know, to get that much great music making is really pretty cool. So what do we have here? First, we get the music for string quartet and cha other chamber stuff. Uh, the two string quartets, which are kind of freaky. And his homage, I Hilding Rosenberg. Oh, that's interesting for violin and cello, cello and the ballad and dance for two violins and the Andante and Allegretto for string quartet. And these are all played by the Arditi string quartet who specialized in that sort of thing. And, you know, it's really, really cool. I mean, it's just wonderful music and, and challenging music, yes, but fantastically written and the guy was a genius. So, you know, it's always interesting to hear geniuses be genial, even if they're not easy when they're genial. So anyway, let's see. Next, disc two, acapella choral works. Oh, this has all the fun stuff, or a lot of fun stuff. You get Ayazaka. I might even know, am I pronouncing that correctly? I don't care. It doesn't, it matters not a bit. Regal and Ideken Feldenden, whatever that is. Um, and let's see, Magani and Ket, Canon and and these are all like in Hungarian. Why am I even trying? But you get looks eterna. <laughs> That's what matters. You get looks eterna, which is like the cool, you know, 2001 Space Odyssey piece that everybody sort of knows, even though they don't know where it's coming from. So that's really fun. And then you get three fantasies after Holderline. Thank God it's in German. And some Magyar thingy, thingy hoojis and all kinds of other fun stuff. So this is with the London Sinfonietta Voices under Terry Edwards. Then we've got, ah, uh, Piano Works, the Piano Etudes, the greatest set of etudes written in the latter half of the 20th century and possibly the first half of the 20th century. Fascinating. Also, music of Richard Cotta, which is marvelous. This is all with, with Pierre Laurent Aimard. And you get one etude from book three of the etudes. I wish we had all of them. But Pierre Laurent Aimard is a modern music specialist also, and he plays them splendidly. Then let's see, we have vocal works, Nonsense Madrigals with the King's Singers, Mysteries of the Macabre, which is part of his opera, The Grand Macabre, which is in here, by the way, um, Aventure and Nouvelle Aventure with Phyllis Brynjolfsson. Oh, she's so great, this music. My God, she's fabulous. With members of the Philharmonia under Esapekka Saladin. I mean, you know they're going to do a fabulous job. And let's see, Der Zummer with some other people and, oh, just other stuff here. Let's, you know, lots of things in like Hungarian and whatnot that I'm going to massacre if I try to pronounce them. And therefore, I will not. I'm going to be just very sensible about it. So those are vocal works as opposed to choral works. They're songs and, and little ensemble things and cute things like that. Then we've got, oh, mechanical music. This is so cool. This is so cool. I mean, you know, you've got the Hung Hungarian rock, of course, the Chacon, um, and Capriccio number one, and Continuum and Invention and Capriccio number two. You know, these are things for like harpsichord, actually, which is really rather cool. Or barrel organ, in this case. Some of these pieces can be played on like multiple instruments. And then we've got Musica Richard Cotta again um, on barrel organ. Of course, you want to hear it on a barrel organ. Why not? And the Poem Symphonique for 100 Metronomes, one of the great avant-garde works of 20th century futurism. And it is fascinating. It's an exercise in texture, just like Lux Eterna, but a very different one. And it's awfully, awfully clever and worth listening to. Then we've got the 
Etudes for Piano, the version for player piano, which reflects the influence of Conlon Nankaro, on, or Nankaro, if you want to pronounce it that way, who cares, um, on Ligeti, who just really was fascinated by that stuff. And let's see, oh yes, okay, let's see what else have we got here. More keyboard works, CD6. We have, oh, Sonatina, and, and let's see, for Piano Four Hands, and the two Capriccios again, and three pieces for two pianos, and the Hungarian Pasakalia and Hungarian Rock, again, can't hear that too many times. It's so much fun, even if it's only like three minutes long or something like that. No, it's five, no, it's three minutes long, five minutes long, pardon me. And the two studies for organ and volumina, that is another one of his, like, scary, cool, avant-garde pieces, and it's for organ, which makes it even more cold and alien and terrifying and creepy, and oh, it's just marvelous. And then we've got some chamber music, the trio for violin, horn, and piano, homage a uh, Brahms. Brahms would be spitting in his grave. It's fantastic, but it's wonderful music. The 10 pieces for wind quintet, almost unlistenable, it, you know, modernist music for wind quintet is almost always a mistake. And, you know, and we get bagatelles for wind quintet, all with the London winds. And the sonata for solo viola with Tebbia Zimmerman, which is quite splendidly played. But the wind music, I just, you know, I just think wind instruments need tunes. I'm sorry. They just need tunes. And then finally, the opera, La, La Grande Macabre, the whole blasted thing, conducted by Esapekka Salad. And it's really a good opera, by the way. It's lots of fun. So, that's the whole deal. That's Ligeti in a box. I wish we had the concertos and other orchestral works. I really do. But um, this is, yeah, you can get those elsewhere. They're, they're, not, they're easy to find. Um, really quite a splendid collection on Sony. Uh, really fantastic performances. And, and, you know, the guy, like I said, he was, he was one of the great ones. Absolutely one of the great ones. Challenging at all times, but worth it. Really, really worth it. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.